so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the keys for this soccer ball right here. Notice that when I select the main controller, all I can do is set keys to the translate X, Y, and I'm going to get rid of the translate X because as you guys can see right here, I'm animating. I'm going to use this attribute, which is a translate Z and the translate Y, but I'm not going to use the translate X, which is facing the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to translate X, right mouse button, lock and hide. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that my video reference and my geometry match. I'm going to use my X-ray setup right here. I'm going to go frame 293, which is our last frame. And I'm going to move my image plane so that my soccer ball from the video is right behind the soccer ball of the geometry. And as you can see, they match perfectly. I'm going to hide my grid real quick. And there. Okay, so we want our ball to end right there. Excellent. I'm going to go to frame number one. Let me bring my grid. And the very first thing that I'm going to do, since I'm going to be keying the translate Y, the translate Z, and the squash for this ball using the main controller plus the rotation for this controller. And in frame number one, I can do that on the time slider or I can do it right here in the channels. Select these three attributes, right mouse button, key selected. And notice that I've set a key on my time slider. Now I'm going to select this controller right here, do the same thing key selected, and now both this controller, the main controller, and the rotate controller, all their attributes have been keyed. Now if I go to my custom quick layout, which is my perspective and my side camera, once I select the controllers, I'm going to select both of the controllers, notice that my main controller, I have translate Y, translate Z, and squash, and they're all keyed. Because I only have one key, we don't see any curves. And if I select my rotate controller, the X rotation has been keyed. And there's no curves because we only have one key at frame number one. So we are going to use our video reference right here to set the keys of the sphere starting at the very, very, very top. Now we have auto key selected. And I'm at frame number one. So whatever I do to this right here, if I bring my ball right here to the very top, let me go to X-ray. Let me get a close setup for my ball. My translate Y value has moved all the way up to 84.466. And I can see that my translate Y and my translate Z have new keys now. And that is because I had auto key. So if I was to move this right here, notice that those keys have changed. And they also have changed in the graph editor. Let me go to undo. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go to our contact pose. So I'm going to move to frame 13. Let me shrink my range slider so I can get a closer view of my frames. And again, I'm going to move my ball down. Let me hit F to zoom in. Make sure that this ball right here is at the right place. So I have my contact. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to move right to the next pose, which is going to be the apex for this ball, which is going to be right here. And I'm going to move this ball right here. Then we're going to go to the next pose, which is going to be another contact pose right here. I'm going to move this ball down and a little bit to the right hand side. I'm going to move my range slider and I'm going to scroll up to the next pose, which is the apex at frame 34. Move the ball right here. And then we're going to scroll up to our next pose. And we are going to move the ball right here. Now I know that this contact pose right here and the contact pose at 28 should be the same. I will fix that later. So let's go back to our next key, which is our apex right here. Let me move the range slider. And I'm going to move the ball right here. And I'm going to go to the next contact, which is frame 49. Move this ball down here. Go to the next apex. Let me zoom in. Which is 
frame 52, move the ball right here, go to the next contact, which will be frame 56, move this ball down here, and we're going to be doing this until we're done with all the poses for our bouncing ball. All right, so I've keyed all my up and down movement, all my translate Y movement. So I know that all these keys at the very, very bottom should match. Now they're not matching because our video was not right on the ground. It was actually a specific height. So we were looking down and the ball was rolling towards us. So we have a warp perspective. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the contact poses like this and I'm going to make sure that they all have the same number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a number. See the last one right here. This height is at 5.062. I'm going to copy this number and I'm going to select the rest of the contact poses like this. And I'm going to type in this value right here, hit enter. And now notice that all my contacts now are at the same place. So when I scrub this animation, the ball bounces, the ground will be at the height of 5.062. So as soon as you key your translate Y and Z, and if I click on the translate Z, this is what my translate C looks like. This just means that the uh, ball is moving on the Z like so. Next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go to those keys that I've created, 1, 13, 20, and on and on, and then I'm going to key the rotation. Once I'm done keying the rotation, then I'm going to key the stretch and squash, and so on. And then at the end, I'm going to play the video. And remember, it's a video reference. We're not rotoscoping. We're not going, this has got to be exact, because we're never going to get it exact, and the human eye can tell. But first of all, I'm putting my image plane in a layer and I'm locking the layer so I don't have to select that every single time. Now I'm going to use the Y translate, the up and down movement, as a guide. So whatever I put a key on the Y, I'm going to put a rotation key. This way is going to save me a lot of time. I am comparing my geometry to the video reference. So. I work on the contact pose, which is when it hits the ground, and on the apex. And then I let Maya do the in-betweening. Now, if there's something very unique where there is a rotation uh, because it hits the ground and it goes in the opposite direction, then I manually fix it. All right, so now I'm selecting the image plane. I'm getting out of X-ray because I want to see the actual video reference. And everything is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Once I have my translate Y, translate on Z keyed, and then my rotation keys, the last thing that I will add will be my stretch and squash. And the stretch and squash is gonna happen are our contact points right here. So in order to do that, I will key my squash in the same places where I keyed the translate Y and the translate Z and the rotation. We want to have the keys in the same place to start. That is in case I need to stretch and squash the entire animation, everything will be scaled accordingly. Okay, so at, same, at frame 13, there's going to be a squash. So then what I would do, I would go to frame one. And for my squash right here, notice that we have one key. At frame 13, there is no key. So I'm going to go to squash and I'm going to go right mouse button, key select. I'm going to go to frame 20, key select, and on and on. So when I'm at frame 13, I'm going to move my squash, not too much, right here, a negative 0 0.1. Here, it's at 0, negative 0 0.1. As it moves up halfway into our curve, let's say frame 17, then we're going to get a stretch. And then at frame 20, the ball is going to go back to its original shape. So we're going to get a squash, stretch, and then the regular. And then again, when we go back, we're going to get another squash. This time it's going to be smaller because we're not putting that much force. So negative 0 0.05. 
and when we come down we're not going to have that much of a stretch so if at frame 17 we had a stretch of let's say 0 0.2 at frame 24 instead of 0 0.2 we'll have 0 0.15 and notice that we get a squash stretch back to its original shape a little bit of stretch and then here we'll get a squash at frame 28. And this is how you do your basic animation. Concentrate on your translation on Y and Z, you then concentrate on your rotation, and then you concentrate on your stretch and squash. <laughs>